Ontario Finance Minister, new minister, Rod Phillips, will be releasing his fall economic statement later today, 3.30's time. Uh, Phillips plans to show the province will be looking to beat its own $10.3 billion deficit projection. For some preview and analysis, let's, uh, we're joined live now by Jasmine Pickle. She's the interim Ontario Communications Director with the Canadian Taxpayers Federation. That's quite a title. Thank you for, <laughs> for being here. That's Not our time. Time. Sorry, we have. <laughs> you're going down there for this, right? I so, am, very shortly. Get you down there for lockup. Okay, let's start with this. This, you know, the deficit. Um, artificially inflated, for sure, by, by this government, right? They played flat, fast and loose with the figures. There's no doubt about it. And, and I wonder if that automatically, from the jump, kind of weakens their, their position. Are they exposed a bit, their credibility? Well, I think if anything, I mean, I don't want to attribute motivation to them. I think there were some structural changes that eroded that number. Um, but the issue now for them is that it was halved from about 15 billion yeah, to seven. That's not nickels and dimes. That's no, 7.5 last year. And so for this year, the budget's pro projecting a $10.3 billion deficit, which is a retreat. So it kind of puts them actually in a more difficult position where, you know, if last year now the deficit's lower and it's going up this year and they're a government trying to forward the narrative that they're saving money, well, they've got a lot of explaining to do. Not just saving money, but Doug Ford, you know, his his whole thing is he's allergic to deficits and debt, right? He'll do <laughs> Apparently anything. Apparently not. <laughs> He'll do anything. Apparently not, right? <laughs> um, the, the, the charge against him, the consensus from center left has always been that, that he has this myopic deficit reduction uh, plan at any cost. And I wonder how much pressure Rod Phillips is under to outlast and outperform Vic Fidelli, his finance minister, too. That's got to be... It, in people's minds. So it's such an interesting narrative because everyone likes to talk about Ford cuts. I think that's all that we heard in Ontario during this past federal election. But what I would ask uh, the prime minister and the big union bosses talking about Ford cuts is what cuts? This, pri this premier has spent more than the past premier. So he's a bigger spender than Kathleen Wynne. It pains me to say it mm. uh, because Ontarians waited so long for a premier to balance the budget. He spends, you know, 1.7 billion more on health care than Kathleen Wynne did, 700 million more on education than Kathleen Wynne. So to all of these people talking about Ford cuts, I say what cuts? He's a big spender. And frankly, he needs to start saving. Well, Doug Ford's uh, yeah. gospel's always been we have on every any level of government, whether he's in it or looking at it and observing it, is we have a, uh, a spending problem. And the unions have been clear just a few days ago. They were out there preaching that we have a spending problem or a, a, a revenue problem. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a big bridge to gap. And he has to win labor. That's the biggest job right now beyond today's theater is getting this contract with the teachers done. That's huge, right? So I would actually argue, you know, the unions are never going to support Ford. They thought that Dalton McGinty was a bad guy. So I don't think Ford is ever going to get a vote from, you know, the big union bosses. But right. what I will say is I was in committee on Monday morning to talk about whether government workers should get this raise. The government's offering them 3% over three years. The Canadian Taxpayers Federation called for a wage freeze because obviously these raises would have to be deficit funded. They're going to add to the debt or add to taxes, one or the other. I was the only witness of 17 witnesses that day talking to the government committee that was representing taxpayers. The other 16 witnesses were all unions telling the government that they need to keep spending more. Um, and I have no idea where they think this money is going to come from. Um, but it was quite uh, you know, a shock to me when I looked at the agenda, you can imagine that morning and thought, they're very organized. They're very powerful. Uh, frankly, taxpayers need a premier who's going to stand up to these uni unions once and for all because they are the biggest cost driver. Uh, and frankly, you know, government employees are the biggest expense to, uh, to Ontario taxpayers. Just a few seconds left. I want to get this one last question in. We don't know exactly how this minority Franken government in Ottawa is going to work <laughs> in terms of tax policy because, you know, this government's going to kind of have to retroactively, uh, you know, factor into that. What do you see happening in Ottawa? Oh, my wise. goodness, a dumpster fire, frankly. Uh, you know, we've minority governments are always more expensive, especially when you're trying to please a coalition. There's some pork barreling there. Yeah. But, you know, Justin Trudeau at least pretended last time he was elected that he was going to balance the budget. You know, he was $20 billion off this year. And now he's abandoned that promise altogether. So it's really scary times. And at least in Ontario, we need a premier who will say, you know, taxpayers believe in balancing their household budget. The government should do the same.